You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. Now, back to the show with local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. You are listening to The Money Hour at 1150 AM, KKNW, the Saturday, January 29th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch the show on the show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on any upcoming events, please go to Tina Mitchell events.com. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. I am here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that I have on the show. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And uh, now in studio, I have Doug Peterson of Get Priority Straight, College, Kids, and Money right here on 1150 AM KKNW. All right, Doug, really getting excited to get into our conversation around college kids and money. So what do you feel is the biggest challenge for people teaching their kids about money? Yeah, I really think it's three things. The world has changed a lot. I mentioned earlier that there's a lot of automation extracting money automatically. So people don't know that they're actually spending it. They don't know how much it is. And it's become more complex. And most people don't know what it costs to live. And I think the biggest reason, but those two feed right into it, is they really haven't been taught how to manage. And if you can't model it well to your kids, they don't know. And in fact, I remember my parents just not talking about it at all. Yeah. So in, um, on that then, uh, Doug, when is the best time to get your children to manage their own money? Yeah, I can't say I did this from experience because huh? I didn't, but I think kids can learn as early as eight years old how to manage it. They can run technology, they can run a phone, they can run a little budgeting app, and they can learn how to give and how to uh, save and save up for something special, but also know where it went. So I think you need to start them really young. I totally agree. And I, you know, I, I think too, if you, um, if your, your kids are getting allowance, they've got some way that they're bringing in money outside of the necessities, the things that you're going to buy anything extra, you know, when you're in the grocery store and they want that toy or they want the piece of candy or whatever that case may be, they can have it. They just have to pay half of it. You know, so if they, if they have half of the money, you'll put the other half in. And I think, you know, that's a really good uh, exercise and way for them to be managing their own money, understanding the importance of saving. So they want the toy here, but maybe they don't because there's something else that they're going to want more the next time. Right. Yeah. and, And let them run out of spend it all at an early age and not when the stakes are higher and they just yeah. went to college and bought a BMW or something. So true. So Doug, how about uh, an allowance and uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think giving them allowance is fine and you need to let them know what they need to do for that. You know, they live here, they have yeah. to contribute, but on your earlier point, um, then put them on a commission. You do this job, you make this much extra money. Kids are more careful with money they've earned. Yeah. And this prepares them for life after parents. And they really don't value your money. It's just amazing. You know, it, it came too easy. That's a great idea. Put them on commission. Here is the standard and the basic of what you need to do. And if you do this, this, and this, that will increase it. And it also shows that the of the hard work is as well, because if you go into anything related to sales or you go into your own business, it's the effort you put in, the more effort that you put in, the more money you're going to make. Or even if you go in as an employee with a salary position, the more effort you put in, the higher chance you are going to get increases and even better get a promotion within that company. So starting them at a young age, uh, great advice. So if your child has a big expense, how should you handle that? You know, obviously kids can't handle all their stuff, but it's back to the earlier point. If they have a little bit of skin in the game, it makes a big big difference. So maybe they can't afford half, but having them help makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, What about kids working for money? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm all for it. 
kids like adults want to be rewarded. They want to have autonomy. It gives them a sense of independence and accomplish independence and accomplishments. And there's lots of things kids can do to earn money, not just around your house, but around the neighborhood with friends, dog walking. I mean, people think they're limited. You know, I'm too young. I can't do much. But you can't do much because you've never done much. <laughs> there's a real challenge in our, in our um, economy about kids just not working. Yes. So I think it's a great habit to build. Well, and I think it was, uh, well, I don't think, I know. For me, it was a blessing uh, having parents with no money and, you know, playing my violent Pike Place Market to help our parents keep a roof over our head. And, you know, I waited for uh, probably two years to be, and I checked everything. Thing. The straw strawberry field is the only place you could pick at 10 years old. Everything else you had to be 12 years old. So I waited. And when I was 10 years old, I went and I worked the strawberry field. And that experience gave me so much, you know, value of being able to earn. Now, before then, I sold rocks and, you know, did all kinds of things to make money. But um, yes, I think it's really important uh, to get the kids as early as age as possible, uh, seeing that they can actually earn money um, and put in that hard work. So do most parents have a plan for saving for college? Well, I think we know we all should. Yeah. Uh, and in hindsight, I was late in the game, but often, you know, we're just trying to get a house, you know, a car, a house, you know, just get our lives started. So um, that's something where Alicia is really helpful. And again, we all know this, but most of us don't do it. The earlier you start, the yeah. better off you are. Yeah. So we know college costs have really gone up. I went to my dermatologist and she said that her son's paying more in daycare for daycare than it costs her to get a degree as a doctor. That is crazy. It's just crazy. So it is expensive and you do need to plan. And to make a little plug for Alicia, because I've, I've hired her, um, you can do a lot and save a ton of money if you plan. Well, that's yeah. what I teach too, but I don't teach it around college. I bring in Alicia. Yeah, but well, I'm so happy that both of you are uh, here in studio together. Uh, so what about kids participating in saving for college? What are your thoughts there? Well, you know, when we talked about um, them starting to manage their own money, maybe it's giving, maybe it's saving, putting a small portion away for that so they can start thinking this is something that you do and grows over time. Imagine somebody just putting a little bit away and seeing in five or 10 years how much that's growing. Uh, we don't learn that in our society. It's just crazy. Yeah. And I'm amazed how this isn't taught in schools. But I think, yeah, even if they're saving out of their allowance, you know, 20% or 10% of their allowance toward college, and yeah. their allowance is only $5 or $10, I think it's what you need to do. Yeah, what do we need to change to get this in school? Because it's as important as English and math and science, you know, to, to have a class um, education on finances. So Doug, what is your feeling around kids that they're buying on Amazon uh, on their parents' accounts or subscribing to service? What, what are your thoughts there? You know, I, I wouldn't give them access at all. First yeah. of all, when a charge comes through on Amazon, it shows up as Amazon in your credit card statement. So you don't uh -huh. know what you bought. Most people don't balance credit card statements. Uh -huh. um, and they won't even notice that instead of getting they have three Spotify subscriptions instead of getting a family plan. I mean, they're just wasting money and it's just amazing. And I, and I want to make a comment too about teaching finance in school. They do teach it, but what they teach people to do is project. And a projection is different than knowing where your money went and adjusting yeah. it and only spending money you have. You can make a projection, but then most people go, oh, my projection didn't work. So I, I went off my budget. Yeah. And that's not a, a valuable spending plan. And they just don't have a construct or a paradigm to teach people how to manage and adjust with the money they have. Because you can only spend money you have. Yeah. But they're being taught you can spend money that you don't have because yeah. we'll give you credit. Yes. It's just, it's horrible. Yeah. It, it is. I mean, there's there's something to say for the ability to be able to leverage to make more, uh, but credit majority of the time, most of it is not leveraging at all. It's leveraging your lifestyle, not yeah. leveraging uh, your financial uh, picture. Yeah, so how did, what, what was that? Consumer debt. It's that consumer debt. You know, back in, yeah. and I didn't see it as much in this uh, refinance uh, boom that we just went through. Uh, but my first refinance boom, uh, when I get into the mortgage industry, uh, 
uh, about 27 years ago, a few years in, we had the, the first big refinance boom. And I had, you know, so many people that were uh, taking cash out to pay off revolving debt. And I thought, wow, that's just, that's really great. Because I was, you know, not that, I was relatively new in the industry. And then sure enough, the refinance boom came back and I had the same clients come back and get more cash out of their home to pay off more debt. So they took the cash out to pay off their debt and then went out and bought the new boats and all the things as well, right? Yeah. 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 So and, Doug, yeah. what was that? It, it's sad. I even had a financial planner as a client and they got behind and they sold one of their rentals and then they were in the same boat again. Yeah. They never really learned how to change. Yes. Yeah. So and, Doug, how can you set aside money for college when... Uh, you have a lot of other goals. I mean, you been, you mentioned for yourself personally by a, buying a house. You know, I bought my first house when I was uh, 20 years old. Um, you have retirement. You're trying to manage uh, how you're going to be able to uh, live in retirement. And, and also, I mean, you know, you want to travel and do some fun things. So uh, how do you do all of that? That's uh, the million dollar question. Isn't it? <laughs> You just can't do it all at once. We're in different seasons of our lives. And I named the company Get Priority Straight because our priorities change. And you need to determine on an ongoing basis what's really important and cut out what you don't care about. And if you're just paying your bills and you're hoping there's something left, you'll be disappointed. Yeah. But if you're proactive and you give every dollar a job before you spend it, you'll make better decisions and get more of what you want. Yeah. And it's amazing, the little shifts I've seen in people is they look in their freezer instead of just buying more groceries because they want more to go to their vacation fund, to their new home fund, to their car fund, to travel, to whatever it is. But it's paying attention saves usually 15 to 20% of waste. Yeah. It's a huge number. And isn't it true too that, I mean, if you always are saving for something, you will spend less money. Yeah, and I, I, I'd expand beyond that. Don't just save for something. Oh, look, there's sunshine. I can't yeah. believe it. It's I know. Why well, was you? You saw me dealing with that earlier. I had to kind of put some uh, stuff all together to block it. I'm all bright. Yeah, <laughs> you're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are we talking about? Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So on just, top of on top of always wanting is saving for something. Wanting yeah, not just saving for something, but having every dollar have a job. You don't yes. have an extra pool. You can have an extra pool that's an emergency fund, but it's only for emergencies. Yes. So don't just figure we'll save and, and we'll have this extra bunch of money because you've already got it committed. You do yeah. want all the things we mentioned before. Yeah. And when we're talking about, you know, all those different uh, uh, categories of retirement, uh, students saving for college and travel. You know, I know you work with a lot in, you know, those buckets and um, you talk about having a different season in your life, you know, depending on where you're at. But if you always have those buckets, if you know at some point in time, you're going to need college, you know, you're going to need retirement, you know, you want to travel, but you can change in the seasons in that percentage you know, maybe you're putting the higher percentage in the college fund uh, right now, and that's coming and lowering the percentage in the retirement, you know, depending on the season you're in, would that be, would that be correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I completely agree with you. And the, the, the other thing that's so nice about this is that when you do have money before you need it and actually go on vacation in November, we went down to Cabo San Lucas in November, had more money in our vacation fund when we got back. We didn't deplete it all. We had all of our Christmas savings done by December. So you're in a cash, cash basis. It just makes things easier and you feel good. Yes. Actually, yeah. it feels like you can have give permission to give yourself something nice. I love that. Uh, less than a minute uh, left. A shout out for anyone, for the people listening to the show today. Well, if you want to learn more about this, both for your personal and your business, I just do a free Get Acquainted meeting. And we just have a conversation about what your goals are, what your challenges are, you know, what I offer, see if it's a fit or not. And uh, you just go to schedulewithdoug.com and you'll get right to my calendar and there's no obligation. And I'd be happy to have a conversation. Wonderful, Doug. Thank you so much for, again, being a regular uh, contributor to the show. You provide so much uh, value to uh, my listeners. And I'm glowing. 
You are glowing. <laughs> you always glow in my uh, my mind, Doug, but now everybody well, can see it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Doug.